I'm Takur. Greetings. Greetings. Good morning, Takur. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I wanted to come and give you a couple of pieces of information about how the meetings with the governments went. More of you were there than ever before. There were 30 plus humans that attended the conferences with the humans that lasted from August 1st to August almost, well, into August 5th. It was only supposed to be a three day get together. However, people came and people went and it lasted for almost five days. Four days and eight hours to be exact. Many, many things were discussed and many of you spoke. And as you were speaking, they understood your desires and your passion for the things that you wanted. Many people spoke on first contact. Many people spoke on site to site. Many people spoke on the hybridization program. Many people spoke on weaponry and peace on earth. Many people spoke about interdimensional fighting and wars that are happening in other dimensions with your secret space programs. Other people spoke on a variety of different subjects that they were made aware of from different areas of your planet and different sources. They are becoming aware that your people are not just uninformed anymore. They are becoming aware that they need to do something because the information that is out there is becoming a very much more available and it is being sought after in a greater way than ever before. They understood the very first thing that they took into consideration this time which I found to be most hopeful for us is the medical programs. They were thinking that some people should be sent to the colonies for healing, for operations, for medical healings of all kinds, but still they are saying that only their people, the government families and the government uh, peoples should be the ones that enjoy this benefit. But we said no, it must be everyone or no one. But it appears to us, and we cannot read their minds, however, it does appear that they are considering that, and that they, that might be the beginning of the site-to-site -site program. Now, just bringing people site-to-site -site has not been approved, of course. However, it's, every time we speak of it, it becomes a longer subject. We speak about it for a longer period of time. We speak about it in different kinds of terms. We speak about it in localizations. We speak a lot about it in how to organize something of this nature. And they do not seem to, to act like they're that interested in doing it right now. However, there are so many questions that they have and so much information that's coming forth about what they want to do with that if it ever happens. So that makes us believe that eventually they will give in to that as well. First contact is a very big subject with them because they're afraid that the people will be extremely frightened and not understand. At this point, yes. But there will come a point in the near future within the four or five years where more people will be aware, where more people will be exposed to uh, information that will bring a little bit more clarity to who we are. There are movies out now that portray good aliens and bad aliens. This is the first time that we've seen that good aliens are being portrayed in movies in a greater sense. I'm not sure if you were aware of that or not, but they are being seen as more positive. I believe that influence has come from us and from our colleagues that are working around the globe to speak to some of those producers and writers so that they can input 
positive alien contact in with the work of some of the more scary aliens that are negative. Now, having said that, there are still more negative aliens in, in the limelight than there are positive. But we are seeing some changes, and we are seeing the movement of some positivity on your planet toward embracing the fact that aliens can be good and that they can be positive. And this gives us great excitement and great hope for the future. I know that there are many, many subjects that were dealt with in, in the conference, and several of you spoke. At least 20 humans spoke their mind, and some of the subject matter was very diverse. And therefore, I was very proud of the human race for their pre preparation, even if it was in the astral and not in the physical, that they did a great job to communicate to those world leaders that they are interested in the future. They are interested in this present time also, and that they are interested in moving forward in a way that will help the galaxy. They are aware, you are aware, I should say, and make the governments more aware of how special Earth is to the galaxy and the universe. I cannot go into all the different things that were discussed. However, I'm sure that there are some questions. Please ask specific questions so that I can uh, give you a specific answer on that particular subject. I know that many are still very curious about many different subjects that were discussed. Okay, thank you so much, Takur. Um, the first question I'd like to um, get in here quick is from uh, Leander on the event page, asking uh, what the current energies are if there's going to be first contact in 2020, and also what one is able to do with the scalar field generator that is listed on the GERC Fitnir website. Um, so if you could go into detail on either of those. Well, I am not aware of the generator, but I know the answer to the other questions. Um, first of all, what was the first? Ask the first question again. What the current energies are if there's going to be first contact in 2020. Yes, those two questions I can answer. Right now, their current energies, I'm wondering if uh, many of you are feeling tired and exhausted. Um, many of you are feeling uh, that your energies are just not what they used to be. Uh, I've heard many people speak to Jim and to other people about the fact that their, their energy is not up to par. The Earth energies are much, much faster now. They're speeding up in some ways to become more evolved. And so, therefore, you are not used to having this fast of energy around, and it makes you feel tired, makes you feel lethargic, makes you feel that you are not part of that energy. But it is part of your evolution to move slowly and upgrade your system so that you can accept this energy into your life. So that is why you're feeling tired. That is why you are feeling, some of you are feeling tired. Some of you have already embraced this energy and are feeling the more a more energetic side to yourself, a more creative, a more clarity, some of these things. But many of you are still coming into this energy Many of you are still dealing with the change of energy that happened in June. So therefore, late June, I should say. So therefore, it has not been that long since this, this energy has uh, started moving faster. So do not be upset about that. It is on a perfect timing with the fourth dimensional energy that is coming. I don't know how it managed to be that way, but it is. And that energy, that fourth dimensional energy, will actually help you to bring that into your system, bring that into your reality, and make you feel a little bit better. 
there will be some that will continue to experience some lethargic and some uh, laziness, if you will, e even during the fourth, the beginning of the fourth dimensional energy, because their systems have not been with the fourth dimensional energy as strongly, and that is all right. There are, it is made for each individual person, and that does not mean you will not be a great person. It does not mean that your fourth dimensional energy will be any less than anyone else's. But it's just the way that you have to handle it as an individual. Also, the second part of the question was, ah, 2020, first contact. I have so many things on my mind right now, you have to forgive me. Because there are many things that we must discuss. But um, first contact in 2020 or 2021 does look possible. But... Your Earth governments are thinking that it doesn't seem that it could be possible. But we are seeing some greater movement in the Earth thought processes and greater movement in the positivity in some areas. So it is possible. We will not say that it is not possible. But I would love to see that happen. I would love to be connected directly to Earth by 2020 or 2021. We cannot verify that this will happen. As you know, the future cannot be predicted 100%. There are too many variables. I know that God would have some insight to some of these variables, but as a species in outer space or beyond your planet, we can only see what we can see in this scenario. Okay, that makes sense, and let's go ahead and walk into that timeline where that is happening <laughs> sooner rather than later. Yes. We would love to see you move to that timeline, yes. Yes, everybody, collectively, let's go. Okay, enough of the pep talk. So um, next, I think we have a question from Max um, for Slava. All right. Um, yeah, Slava is asking a personal question. Are you... Good with personal questions now, Tucker. Will it help the general public if I ask it? Answer it. I think everything connected to Slava helps because it gives a perspective and wonderful Excellent. loving perspective. I so Slava answer. asks, <clears throat> just recently, yesterday, I remember someone like feline being, it seems like we are contacted like telepathically, con contacted like telepathically, or at least uh, I perceive it like telepathically. I wonder if it was my daughter. I'm not sure, but I know that I visited her before, and I believe there was her mother as well. I uh, yes. hope she's fine. You're always visiting your children, and you have quite a few at this point, because you've asked for quite a few. And yes, it was your daughter, and yes, you do have great perceptions of your family in, in off-world scenarios. Therefore, yes. It was your daughter. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a g general question now. Good, uh, several g general questions, which I think are nice prompts, which you expect. So, how were the participants of the meeting of this August first to five uh, meeting? How the participants were selected? Was it by aliens or by uh, governments who selected them? No, they volunteered, and we took those that volunteered. Some also volunteered to speak, and we took them as well. Now, so, we asked some to speak, and we asked some to come that did not volunteer, so it was selected by us as well, because we knew that they, were, they had information that was important to give to the governments. And so 90% were volunteers, but 10% were selected by us. So light workers were participating as a holographic projection and government people were present in physical? Yes. And it was all on the surface of the earth? <laughs> yes. Now I wanted to make, I wanted to let you know something right off. It seemed like at first, well it was at first, that there was not as great a population of the earth's governments there as usual. But by the second day, 
they were all there in fullness. However, we, we found it a little disheartening that the first day there were seven nations missing that usually attended. Wonderful. But they, they have the second day. Wonderful. Uh, as you remember, I uh, suggest that you have uh, a, a constant ongoing conversation. Whenever, you know, whenever it becomes possible, whenever there is interest from the governments, maybe there could be a place where there would be always an alien representative uh, ready to answer questions. So they would have like a hotline, a live person, maybe they could take tour. Maybe you aliens can take tour and have like one or more people, one or more aliens available for answering questions at any time. Yes, we do have some, some countries and governments do have ongoing conversations with us that are not during these particular times. But it's mm -hmm. usually only very important questions and usually only questions that come from fear of attack. They, know, they see that there are so many ships, or there were. Actually, there's a lot less right now because all fourth dimensional ships have left the, the solar system at this point. The original energy cloud is very strong. But they, do, they did notice so many ships, and they had questions about the, the intentions of so many ships and we spoke to about seven or actually nine different governments about our intentions and they're all positive now we are no longer part of the, in the solar system right now we are several hundred thousand miles outside the solar system due to the cloud but we can still communicate with you we just do not want to be pulled into the cloud of, of energy I think you misspoke the distance. Can you repeat the distance? Pardon me? You said a very small distance. I think it didn't make sense astronomically. You said you are away from solar system, but then they named the distance, which is very small. Yes, it is a, it's the smallest distance right now that we can be away. OK. But All right, you, next you see, the, the cloud is not in your solar system yet. But we are on the opposite direction, 300,000 miles. Thank you. Uh, next whereas question. We, whereas we were right in between the Earth and the Moon at one time, and that is only a short distance, not even... We were less than 100,000 miles from the Earth at one point. Now we're 300,000 miles away. Thank you. Um, at some point, another channel said that the aliens would be coming down and visiting the groups of light workers. So we are we're expecting for this form of contact. How far that plan? Can you comment on that plan? Is it already becoming a reality? Can we see you in person, you and other aliens in person down here? No, that will not happen. That was a misspoke. They will be, there will be aliens around the Earth still. Those that are in fifth dimension, third dimension, and higher dimensions. Fourth dimension will not be around. But these people that want aliens to be on the Earth are, are wishful thinking. They cannot be there without your government permission. Thank you. Uh, the earthquakes, can you comment on the earthquakes? There are many. There are many things happening on your planet. If you were to look at the universe of your, your, the, your entire planet as a whole, it, is, it would appear that it is a destruction area. There are many things happening in many different places. Fires, floods, earthquakes, different things of that nature. We are helping as much as we can in as many ways as possible. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about the coming potential disasters. Um, is the number 2027 the year 2027 is still a likely year for the economic collapse? No. Actually, they have moved it up. It will be much sooner than that, as far as they can see. Thank you. Um, 
we had a little insight what will happen after the collapse. How do we go up? Do you have any comment uh, what economic system will be built after that? What is the nature of the new uh, world? It depends on who takes control after the after the collapse is over. There are several dif several different powers vying for the control of the earth after the collapse. The cabal, Anunnaki in some ways, they, they some of the plans are secretive. Your governments are also planning for this because they know that it is coming. Many of your earth people would plan for to reinstate a monetary system and the cobal would go along with that because that is what they know the best. However, other other thought processes are also involved to bring out a new era of change for humanity so that they are not separated, that they are more connected, more united and do not need monetary as their main source of survival. They can use several different means to move forward. This would be the most acceptable for us. But of course, it is up to you on which, which means you do accept. We cannot interfere with that. Thank you. That is most insightful. We were waiting for this answer, and uh, it, it answers a lot of our questions. I pass the microphone. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have a question from Krellick. Uh, yes. Hello. Greetings, Krellick. Yes. Hello, Tikar. Uh, I've been looking at some uh, some official news media sites and they are talking about how scientists have discovered an earth-like planet I wanted to know if you were able to uh, comment on this we have discovered 36,482 earth-like planets so yes there, there there are many out there so therefore, yes, they have discovered this planet, and they call it the second Earth. Some of them do. And some of them call it Earth 2, and they have many cute names for it. However, there it is a planet that has life on it, but the life on it is primitive. Uh, I, um, are they, would this be a step towards disclosure? Well, it would be if there was greater life on this planet. But as far as they can see, there is no nothing but uh, trees, plants, and things, and animals on this planet. There is no civilization that they are aware of. Now, some of the animals on this planet are actually a civilization that is intelligent, but they cannot tell that from their distance. Um, I have a second question about uh, Lyran society. Um, about what happens when a Lyran becomes an adult. Uh, well, whenever anyone becomes a, an adult in any society, there's usually some kind of celebration, some kind of notice that is given to that, that individual. The reason for that is, and the reason that you also do it, is because you want to recognize that they're coming into a greater means of responsibility, a greater time in their life when they are going to notice changes. And you do not want them to be ignoring these things or thinking that they are alone in this change process. So therefore, you bring attention to it so that they do not feel uncomfortable with it. And so that is what happens with our society as well. We bring into the light that you are going through these changes now the changes that a Lyran would go through are much different than the changes a human would go through. A human develops more hair and things of this nature. We already have hair. We have hair everywhere. So that is not one of the changes that would happen with us. So it would be more of a psychological. There is some physical changes, but we do draw attention to them so that they do not feel that they're uncomfortable with these changes. Do you understand that? But they also see, 
when they're younger, that there is a difference between youth and adulthood. So, but to call attention to this change makes them feel more comfortable about themselves. If you call this change into view in a proper way, not in an embarrassing way, in a very in a very successful way, as if you're moving from one period to another and it's going to be a very successful and smooth transition. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I do have one final uh, personal question, but I'm not sure if you are taking those currently. It depends. Continue. Well, it's mostly about if there's any important information that I should know. About, well, important information can be very general. Everybody can know that, have the same important information coming to them. Like, be prepared for the fourth dimensional energy. So, yes, that per piece of information I would continue to stress because some people will feel it much stronger than others. And some will, will actually go through it without much uh, thought about it at all. And others are constantly having deja vus and Mandela effects. Depending on the individual, the psyche, the way that it is affecting the fourth dimensional energy in the brain, that is what will happen. Now, the thing, the thing that I want to bring to you is that you are getting closer and closer to... Uh, to understanding alien processes. You seem to be experiencing a lot of alien processes. And so as a human being, you are closer to understanding some of the alien processes than other people because they visit you a lot in, uh, in the astral and you visit their planets in the astral and so there, I congratulate you for that. You are ahead of the curve for understanding uh, alien cultures. But there are others of you that are going to start experiencing that. In your sleep periods, in your astral times, you're going to start experiencing alien cultures. Many of you already have. Embrace that because when you learn the protocols to speak to other species and uh, beings, it will be helpful to know a little bit about their culture. So remember as much as you can. I know many of you try to remember as much as possible, and it is sometimes impossible. But I think that that will open up a little more with this fourth dimensional energy coming. I believe most of the time the reason why you do not remember things is because you believe that what you experienced did not exist. We're starting to understand that you did not believe it. It was like, uh, was that real or was that not? Now we want you to, we're going to help you to believe it more. When you come here in the astral, we are telling people, believe that you are here. We're telling you to believe in what you are experiencing now. And believe it or not, more people are starting to recall where they have been because now they are starting to believe it. Uh, yes, thank you for that. And I'm hoping that I can talk with you privately in the future. Excellent. And that would be a, a joy for me as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to throw this question in here quickly because a lot of people are asking. Um, so the question I had read earlier regarding the scalar field generator from yeah. Leander saying um, what can one do with a scalar field generator? This is the um, the crystal program scalar field energy vortex um, uh, thing that um, had been that Peter had posted on the Girk Fitnier website and yeah. I think a lot of people are very curious if you'd be able to talk a little bit more about what it can do um, because it looks like it's going into its beta uh, test or not beta but um, it is now on sale. Well 
One thing, I usually, I, I have to admit that I am not much interested in human technology. So that is why I did not know, do not know a lot about it. But it, I know that it is an energy conductor as well as an energy produce, um, energy releaser. Uh, I, I'm not sure how to say that. But um, it releases energy and it brings energy to itself. It's uh, like the Tesla coil in some ways. It generates, I believe that Tesla coil is in it maybe. But anyway, it yeah. is it is part of the advancing of your technology to the basis for energy-based uh, technology such as vibrational technology, meaning that it can embrace vibration, calculate it, study it, and uh, capture it and move it from one place to another. It can also take vibration and change it, which can be dangerous, but it, it can also do that. But it, that can also be a positive thing as well. I don't want to give too many examples of that because there are some people listening that might not use that in the most proper way. But it is a, the, your energy vortex that is created with it is strong, but you will find out that the future conceptions of this particular generator will be much stronger and do much more. But they can do quite a bit. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure that I'm allowed to tell you what you can do all the things you, that you can do with it because it is the basis for other inventions. Okay, fascinating. Well, thank you for elaborating on that. I know a lot of people are excited about it and I think it's a big step forward for us. Um, well, there's a Tesla coil in this home as well. Oh, great. It is very powerful. Yes, they um, will change the world, no doubt. There are um, so many things that you can do. It is the beginning of many different energy inventions. What I mean by energy inventions is that it can change energy as well as create it. Yes, I am so looking forward to <laughs> that being used more in our future. I think we all are. Um, so next up we have a question from Brian. Greetings, Sticker. How are you, my friend? I am very well, thank you. Yes. And how are you, Brian? Good, good. Just uh, feeling these energies. There are a lot of shift and change in the planet. I can feel it. Yes, there is much. Yes, my, my that question. Is probably, yes, go ahead. That is part of the reason for the earthquakes yes. and for the different catastrophes that are going on now. Mother Earth also has to get used to these energies as well as humanity. Yes. Uh, but just two quick questions. Uh, the first being, during the meetings with the governments of the world, um, what was your sense, what was the, the breakthrough that you could feel that really, mm, uh, really gave hope uh, to the uh, Group Fuchner Alliance? I'll tell you when, when humans are very cautious about what they say, not because of the aliens, but because of other humans, mm -hmm. this tells me that their thought processes are not wanting to reveal what they are truly thinking. Does this make sense to you? Yes. So this told us that many of your governments, including the United States and Russia, were thinking that first contact is necessary very soon and that alien interaction would be welcome, but they could not say that outright to the peoples of the world. So they disguised it or masked it in many ways by asking questions that would have a very positive answer from us. Do you understand that? No, very much so. So therefore, they asked a question that they knew actually the answer to, but that would also give other people a positive answer 
to a question that right now they are still feeling negative towards. This kind of psychology by some of your leaders is being used much more often in these government uh, scenarios. I'm using that word a lot today. But anyway, you understand what I am saying, I am sure. Yes, and what's amazing also is that um, your guys' ability, um, even on the ships, to see through that. You do see, you understand that, logically. Having studied yes. human psychology now for several years and have spoken to many different, I've spoken to probably a hundred different humans. <laughs> I'm getting an idea of how the human psychology works and and how humans react to certain stimuli and things of that nature. We are understanding that you are part of who we are as well. Yes. We react very similarly to many of the same stim uh, stimuli. So we are aware that there are some of your leaders that are very interested in connecting. Good, good. Now, Yes. There was just a couple conferences ago, some of these leaders were very negative. And we understand why at this point. Because they could not say anything. They could, they could only do certain things with the certain ways that they were being treated and looked at by the people and by the people around them. Some things have changed quite a bit since then and so therefore they have changed their attitudes now we are also aware that there are some leaders that have alien hybridization within them now we were not allowed to scan them at one point they forbid that any of their the government people were allowed to be known for who they really were and so we have agreed to that because we are trying to stay as closely in line with what they need, want from us as possible. However, a few individuals on your planet that are in high government positions have given us permission to scan them and see who they really are. And interestingly enough, some of them are very highly alien and hybridization. Interesting, very interesting. And it, they are human-born alien hybridizations. Now, some higher than others, of course, but nothing, nothing compared to what you're going to see soon. Oh, wow. And my last question real quick to her was, even um, as you're expanding, um, the Griffith Near Alliance itself, um, yes. are you allowed at this time to reveal any more species that are willing or very close to joining the Griffith Near Alliance? There is one species that is very close to joining and will probably be entering our alliance, at least a, a portion of their population. Now, let me tell you why the entire population is not joining. Um, this particular species has many different ideas and philosophies, and so some of their species is wanting to join Grukvignir, and we are, the reason why they have not joined yet is because we are questioning whether this would divide their species, divide their population, and we would not want to do that by accepting them into our alliance and have them be divided from the rest of their peoples. So we are talking to the whole population about these certain ones, that want to join Gurkvik near because they feel that we are doing the right thing. Now other parts of their population would not do, do what we are doing and feel that we are actually treading uh, on the um, idea that we are breaking the, uh, the promises or the, um, the very fine line between humans and uh, Aliens. Do you know what I'm speaking? The um, yes, yes. Prime directive, as you call it. Yes. It it almost sounds kind of like Earth. Like you yes. Have, and, yes. A divine. And uh, they are 
they are definitely divided. Yes. But they are not divided in a way that will cause war or 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 dissension. But they are divided in philosophy. Are they allowed to so be revealed we at will this time? Be, yes. We will be bringing a sector of the Siri race into our alliance. Is that close to what is that the closest to then? Like um, for uh, are they close to UEL, uh, Lyran type energy? No, no, they're closest to Octorian. Oh wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That's all I had to her. Much love and light. Yes, yes. And at this point, we have not brought the Syrians into our alliance. I mentioned their name only because it is ninety-five percent likely that. This section of their peoples will, their governments will join us, but it is not going to be a negative thing for their civilization. In fact, I think it will be a growing time for them to, for them to share thoughts and to share all the thoughts of the people within our alliance as well. That will bring us to seven in our alliance. And I believe it will help them to understand more beautifully other alien cultures. Thank you very much. We are aware of our Syrian connections, and we love Syrians. We have spoken to them. We are welcome their uh, closer connection now and their activity. Uh, yeah. You just said something which was interesting, provoking about. Uh, our government leaders being a hybrid, being hybrids. Immediately, yes, I, I immediately I was I'm thinking about most famous uh, leaders and wonder what kind of hybrids could they be like. We have like there is they, a. They gave us permission to scan them and let us know who they yeah. were, but they did not give us permission to tell you who they were. Absolutely. Uh, what, what I'm but saying I is, could, I think that you could probably imagine who they were or yes. are. Yes. Uh, ju just after that, you said that it's nothing to what is coming. I assume that coming are more news that some leaders are even more alien, right? I did not say that, but I am saying that there are those that are human born that are more alien than some of your government officials. All right. Thank you very much. I pass the microphone. <clears throat> I would actually, I'm sorry, Cher, I have a really quick question on that. I would like clarification. Um, you say human born. Um, do you mean like getting alien DNA infusions or uh, no. the, the more violent way that I've heard of no. that I'm not sure? No, no. These <laughs> are those that were set up to be born into your pop population to help the the growth of your race and they have volunteered from other species to be born into the human race to help with the ascension okay I understand okay thank you very much okay share go right ahead hey to care much love Sheer, how are you? Uh, I'm uh, uh, very good, actually. I want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, um, you mentioned the Syrian might join. Um, yeah. What uh, density are they at? Syrians are in fifth density. Okay. Most of the population. Mm -hmm. If they are not in fifth density, they are in very high form. But we we perceive them as fifth density. I see. As you would call them. Others would call them different densities. Many have learned different ways of seeing the different densities and learning about them. Which one is the most proper for you, we do not know. Okay. Um, I was wondering when is the next uh, meeting with the government, if there's a um, date that already? That would be late November, early December. Okay. 
and I was wondering uh, which uh, date exactly is the cloud is going to arrive. The seventh, at this point, the 7th of December has been acclimated, or I mean, has been foreseen as the day that it will actually enter the Earth atmosphere. 7th of December? 7th of September. No, oh, a day after my birthday. <laughs> I was... Good for you. Hmm? You'll get a fourth dimensional surprise party. <laughs> um, I were actually was wondering about that. Uh, many things in uh, Judaism happens in September, October, uh, October, like the blood moon and the holidays and many things occur uh, during that time, also the cloud uh, and my birthday. <laughs> so is there a reason for that? We believe that there is. What all the reasons for it we do not know because the, the cloud or field or whatever you want to call it was not, pre was not predicted by anyone. And so what its main function is is going to be a little bit of a surprise but we are believing that it is going to be a positive surprise to help offset some of the negative things that we know are going to happen. I see and is it going to be wiser to ask questions about when first contact is going to arrive or when the economy is going to collapse only after the cloud after we will know what we are facing for? We are not sure how the cloud will affect these things. So it would be wiser to ask them after. There will be some effect. And so many of the things that have been said about all these different predictions that have been made, some things could be changed by the very presence of this extremely high fourth dimensional energy. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, and much, 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 much love to you. Much love to you as well. Is it time for someone else to come? It depends on um, how you're doing. Do you need to go? We have a few more questions. If there are a few more questions, I will take them. Okay. Uh, next, we have a question from Ade. Greetings the day. Hi, Tucker. Blessings. Blessings. Um, I want to ask you about the situation all over Africa. It seems like the reptilians and the Nordics have a stronghold on Africa and affecting it in a very negative way. And it seems like sending it light helps a little bit, but it we go in circles. Like there is resolution and then the same conflict arises again so is there anything being done on your end to help the situation we are not allowed to help these situations this is would be a, a violation of our treaty with your governments however we see what is happening it is positive for the aliens that exist there to do what they are doing but it is negative for the humans. There are many men in black headed that direction to try to clear up that situation. You see, they have now become aware that some of these reptilians are not there not by permission. At first, they were grandfathered in because they were there many years before some of the treaties and agreements were made. But now, they must follow what has been put into those agreements and treaties, and they are not doing so. So they are going to be dealt with, and things should clear up in some ways, yes. Is there anything that we can do on our end to help the situation? Prayer, of course, and sending positive energy into that country. There is a lot of negative energy there, but the people believe that that negative energy should exist. They believe that it exists 
for their protection in some ways. Some of the belief systems in that area of your world are very unusual and bring fear and negative energy to them and they feel that it is going to be used in a positive way. So I cannot actually comprehend it completely, but the belief systems are very disturbing and they need to be, some of them need to be awakened and to the reality of what is happening with their belief systems. Yes, I agree. I don't understand it either. Um, thank you. That was my question and uh, have, thank you. Blessings. You are welcome. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Um, next we have a question from Barbara. Um, she'd like to ask, this morning I saw a figure outside my window in shadow form. It was there for a moment. I was wondering if you could tell me who it was and was it maybe my friend in the woods? Spiracles. It was Spiracles. Okay, um, I think she has left, so um, she will probably hear this at some point. Thank you. You will know who that is. That is her friend in the woods. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And she knows his name. Awesome. Okay, uh, next we have a question from Angie. Um, she was curious if you would be able to tell her anything any explanation in regards to what she's dreaming about? She said she keeps dreaming, she's running and jumping off a building to her death, but she always wakes up right before landing, and she says she is not suicidal. No. This is not about jumping to your death. This is about a leap of faith. It is something that you are thinking about doing that makes you feel insecure. It is not about death at all. It is about something that you are planning or something that you are thinking about doing that is causing you to feel unsafe, that you, the waters are not tested. You are, it's going to be like a leap of faith, something that you are planning to do that you are not sure how the, what the outcome is or what, what is actually going to be happening with that. But yet it is something that you are moving forward in your spiritual journey in your third, third dimension and fourth dimension, it's all inclusive of these things. Do you understand? Okay. Therefore, that is why you wake up before you die, is because you are not to die. You are to be, you are just do not know what happens after that point. But it is a leap of faith. Okay, she says perfect, thank you. Um, next, uh, since we're on the topic of dreams, Cher had a question, quick. Hey, Takur. Um, well, I have many, many dreams lately, but on the yes, morning of the... <laughs> hmm? Yes, I know, continue. <laughs> On the morning of the 13th this month, I actually wake up and uh, took the alpha brain, which I spoke with you about, and uh, went back to sleep for two more hours, and I had a very vivid dream about me using telekinesis on very, on quite large objects, and I remember, like, just focusing about something, having the intention it for, to move, and all of a sudden it will move very fast and immediately like a branch or something like that. There was something with me. It was my boss from work, but I'm pretty sure it was just uh, an ET disguising. Let me tell you what that is about. It is not about tel telekinesis at all, but it is about opening doors on your future there very soon will be many doors that will fly open because you will them to. You are, o you are opening doors in your mind. You are opening doors in third dimension. You are needing to be a place where you are not yet. 
And this is letting you know that there will be a time coming soon that you will be able to open these doors without much effort. Open them for... For you to step through. For the future. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much, and as always, much, much, much love to you. Much love. Okay, thank you. Um, next we have a question from Liliana. Hi, how are you? I am wonderful. And yourself? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank um, you. My question for you is, what, is, what are your insights or what do you know about the substance found in San Francisco de Rincón de Guanajuato? Guanajuato in Mexico, uh, in the uh, house of uh, Sol Collazos Ayala. I would like to know more about that substance. <clears throat> if you, know. I'm not sure I understood the question completely. Well, there was a like a, there are some beings going to Mexico. Uh, they yes. ne they they are uh, found specifically in San Francisco del Rincón de Guanajuato, and they are like light beings, and they are turning into beings, yeah, like physical beings, and yes. I would like to oh, know yes. where they come from and everything. They, and you wonder what they are doing? Yes, please. <clears throat> They, they are on a spiritual journey right now. There are some uh, portals that need to be opened where they are going. But that is not the extent, that is not the full extent of their journey. They are also looking for a particular area that has some artifacts from their ancestries. There are some ancestry issues there. And they are going on a spiritual track, but also a track to find some of their ancestral relics. Some of these relics are very powerful. Is, is there any way we can connect with them? Or are they yes. just... I have connected with them a couple times because they have let themselves be known to the world. And so, therefore, I did speak to them, and this is what they told me. However, I am, they would not tell me what relics they are looking for. This is very personal to them. But, yes, you can connect to them if you wish. They will be happy to speak, but they would not probably give you information about the relics that they are seeking. But they would tell you about their spiritual journey and why now is an important time for them. Now is an important time for them also because of all the different energies that have been introduced to the earth and the fourth dimensional energy. In their particular society, there was something that alluded to the fourth dimensional energy cloud that is here, going to be here on your world very shortly. And so they took that as, it did not say a fourth dimensional energy cloud, but it was a movement of space that they would interpret to mean that this cloud was the right time for them to move in this particular way. Uh, <clears throat> can I know where they come from? If they allow me to tell you, I will tell you, but I have not connected with them right this moment. All right. Thank you. You are welcome. I would, not want to, uh, I would not want to uh, break protocol with them. Okay. Thank you. Um, next we have a question. Um, next we have a question from Louise asking if you're able to answer which aliens are in charge of South America and what are they working with? There are many aliens that are attached to South America. It is probably the most visited of all the continents on your planet because it is the one that has the most free space that is 
amicable to their kind. The rainforests and things of this nature are very home-like to many species because many of the species are from tropical areas and have and, and you will find that there's many different kinds of plant, animal, and insect life there and they uh, study that on a continuing basis. The reason why they go there is to study Earth and to study the things of Earth that are from the ancient past. There's Machu Picchu, there's Lake Titicaca with the, the uh, alien island in the middle, there is Easter Island, there is Ponkapiku, I don't know how to say that one. But then it is where many aliens, there's the Nazca lines, etc. So many things uh, that are there from their past. So they're actually just studying their own ancient past. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. And you will find that the humans that live in South America do not speak about aliens very often. And the reason why they don't is because they experience angel, uh, aliens more than anyone else. And so it's, it's not something they want to talk about. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Um, all right, next question we have is from jo uh, Jonah. She is asking, I have been getting a strong feeling that we are going to get some new senses that people call, quote, superpowers. Can you elaborate on it if it is going to happen soon and how we can allow it? Thank you. What you are feeling is the opening of, of the other portions of the brain. You see, humans only use a very small portion of the brain. And in the other portions of the brain, there are many different gifts that are not open to humans. Telekinesis, the ability to heal, the, heal yourself, to grow appendages, to uh, have psychic conversations, to move from one place to another uh, on, in the physical realm. There are many different gifts inside the brain that are not yet to be opened. But you are getting the insight that they are there. You, are, you know that they are there. You feel them in a stronger way than you ever have because uh, your, the fourth dimensional energy is sort of caressing those portions of the brain in the human mind only to enhance the belief systems so that one day they may open. There are some humans on Earth right now that do have the ability to open one or two of these places. What, another one of those things is being a channeler and open yourself to be able to channel things from other places and that is uh, one of the gifts that is being opened to humans now and to be able to be uh, um, to be effective with yourselves, with telepathy, with uh, knowing how other people feel, being very uh, telepathic that way. There are many different things that are opening up to humans that were very closed to them before. You see, in this era that you are in, the since the year probably 1990 or uh, uh, thereafter, things started to open a little bit more quickly in the mental areas of human beings. And so now you, hear, you are here in your year 2016 and you are experiencing channeling, empathic abilities, telepathic, telepathic abilities, um, the ability to, uh, some of you travel astrally at will, some of them bilocate, some of them, some people are learning all different kinds of things that were never even discussed before, except for in the realms of um, mysterious actions and uh, and whenever they were discussed in a mysterious action, it was usually said, oh, oh, that's evil. And the reason they said that is because the fear of the unknown causes fear to be the main, the main educator, if you will. And so when you're afraid of the unknown, it educates you to be afraid of it. 
So it educates the mind and says, oh, I don't know anything about that, so it must be bad. But many of you are opening up to the different elements of the brain now, the different uh, diversities that the mind holds, and therefore you are not afraid of it any longer. Well, some of you still are, but you, you are becoming less afraid of it because you're seeing it. You see, your reality... And your experience is creating a belief. And some of you believed before there was a reality or, or an experience. And so there is a very great teaching to come out about the belief system that will help you to be able to bring more things to you and bring more uh, positive opening of the brain cells to you in, very, in a coming time. And that will be written down. It will be about reality, experience, and beliefs. And they're all associated, of course. Ita. Okay. Um, thank you. So in regards to that, um, Jonah was also asking why she feels it so strong right now. I know that the energies have a lot to do with this, so then wouldn't the, the upcoming wave... The reason she is personally feeling it so strongly is because she has believed in many things for a, gr a great deal of time or, and have opened herself up to many different positive things and has been very curious about how to move forward in these things. And they are just giving you the um, awareness that, yes, you're, you, it is possible for you to do some things. And it may be not be all the things that you are thinking of, but you are opening up to greater understandings and greater abilities. Okay, wonderful. She says thank you so much. Um, that so, uh, I I would just like to step in quickly and say then um, the those who are looking to progress forward as far as raising frequency and everything in the, in the ascension process um, yes. with the upcoming fourth dimensional waves of energy um, that could potentially assist us um, in those ways as well as far as opening up more to psychic abilities and teleportation and things of that nature, correct? Yes. Beautiful. There much, there's much to discuss about this. Okay, is there anything in particular you would like to highlight before we move on? No, I am fine. Okay. Okay, great. Then um, next question we have is from uh, Jess. She is asking, um, have the negative reptilian energies left, and what exactly was the healing energy I received this morning? I think she's talking just personally. Yes, the personally, yes, the negative reptilian energies are not there at this time. I do not sense them. The healing energy that you are feeling is that from those that are sending healing energy around the world right now. There are many that are in need, and you are experiencing the fallout of much energy that is being sent. However, in particular there is someone sending you some very positive energy directly. Okay, great. And to clarify, that was for Jess444, so thank you for that. Um, I have a quick question, and um, but before I ask, it's just kind of, General, um, I'm wondering how you're doing, how uh, Jim's energy levels are doing, if anyone else wanted to come through. Um, I am doing fine, but there are others that are waiting. Okay. Um, I have a quick question about the colonies, and then maybe we can move on. We might get some more questions. Um, my quick question is just in regards to, I have been remembering some of my astral travels recently as I sleep, which is very exciting, and I've been yeah. remembering uh, meetings, quite a few meetings where it's similar to how we felt at the Arkansas Hot Spring Retreat, where there's yeah. lots of people in a house. Um, I'm wondering if you could give uh, uh, any sort of a 
clarification on the recent meeting, I think it was maybe about a week ago, I feel like I was in where there were lots of people, maybe around 30 or so, were we discussing um, unification and things of that nature? Of course. Um, right now, um, I have to say that there are several different species that are having different conferences. The ones that that you have been in conference with are the half -whores. You are a toner, you know how to do it, and you are one of their... Uh, with Sarah, you can speak the toning language and do different things. Also, you are attached to the elemental forces of the of this planet, and the half are are very much attached to their elemental forces on their planet as well. So you make you are a perfect candidate for them to speak to. Wow, that is um, incredible. I was not aware. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, wonderful. So that's exciting. Um, Sam had a quick interjection. Uh, was asking before you leave if you would be able to assist him with a Pleiadian infusion and to help with his ascension process. It will be sent to him. Sam, where are you? You know where he is. Just get in contact with us and we will be able to uh, give you this infusion. I'm right here at the car. I'll just try to make a quick one. Um, yes. Um, I, we will do a scan on you and see how much uh, alien uh, hybridization you have at this point and if you have some Pleiadian in you, which I believe you probably do, uh, we will increase it. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Very well. Much love to you, Takur. Much love. Okay, thank you so much, Takur. Um, I don't think we have any more questions for you at this time. I know you said somebody else might want to come through. Well, someone asked for Yeshua, and he is here. Oh, wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming today. We love having you, as always. Excellent. Thank you very much. No more stay. No more stay. Much love.